Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video we're going to talk about orthostatic blood pressure. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment in the comment section, and please subscribe. Don't forget to check out ninjanerd.org. That's where we have all of our whiteboard lectures, notes, and illustrations there for you guys so you can help study for any type of test you got coming up. Let's get started. So orthostatic blood pressure, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about not only how to do it, but what, what it is and how this all happens. So first, let's just talk about what we're going to do with our patient and how we're going to run this test. So orthostatic blood pressure is a procedure that we're going to use to see if the patient is having any type of issues with orthostatic hypotension, meaning when they stand up, their blood pressure goes low, and that's when they experience some symptoms. So what we're going to do is we're going to explain the procedure to the patient, tell them what we're doing, and I'm going to explain it to you as well. But when we're explaining it to our patient, we want to make sure that we are going to tell them what they need to expect. So we're going to be telling them we're going to have them be laying and we're going to be checking their blood pressure and their heart rate. We're going to have them standing, checking their blood pressure and their heart rate. So when I explain to you the steps, it's kind of how you're going to explain it to your patient as well. So we're going to explain what we're doing to our patient and we're also going to choose the blood pressure site. So as you're explaining to them, I'm going to be checking your blood pressure in various different places or various different positions. And what I need to do is to first find the best location for the blood pressure cuff. And ideally, that's going to be a blood pressure cuff site that has no IV on that side, no fistula, or no history of breast cancer within those arms. So remember, our patients that have any type of issues with circulation or if they have any type of lymphatic issues, lymph nodes removed from breast surgery, or anything else that's going on with that arm, maybe just choose the other arm for the blood pressure site, okay? We want to make sure that we're also explaining to them the positions. So as we're saying, we're going to be checking your blood pressure, which which arm do you prefer, making sure that it doesn't have a fistula or an IV that we could possibly uh, cause issues with. We're going to say, I want you to lay on your back. So we know that that is supine in the nursing field. I want you to be laying on your back with your legs uncrossed and your arms at your side, palms up. And we're doing this, this anatomical position in the supine motion. And that is because we, this is going to give us the best indicator of the blood pressure, right? At them in their supine position with no crossing of the legs that's going to cause any issues or any false uh, elevation in the blood pressure. And we want to make sure that when we're explaining to them and getting them into position that we are choosing the proper cuff size as well as if you have a monitor, which is great, then you, good on you. You're going to be able to use either the telemetry, you could put the, a couple little stickies on their chest, or you can just put the pulse ox on them as well. If you don't have a monitor in the room, you're just going to do blood pressure manually and pulse manually, you can just palpate the pulse, the radial or the brachial, wherever else is a more comfortable position for you to check their heart rate. So we're going to explain to our patient the steps. So we're telling them we're going to be checking your blood pressure to see if it's going to drop from a change of position. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay with the patient the entire time because you're going to see that there's a five minute interval here where there's not much going on but you want to make sure you're staying with the patient because if they experience any of these symptoms, then we're going to be able to tell the doctor. Plus, you don't want a patient standing up and passing out on you and you're not there and you come back in because that's a whole lot of paperwork and a problem because now your patient is going to have a lot more issues going on. So we're going to say, all right, we got the great. We know the blood pressure cuff site. We know the patient's in the proper position. So they are going to lay supine. They're going to lay with those uncrossed legs, arms to the side, palms up for about five minutes. So when they're in this position, this is when you can keep explaining to them what's going on, why you're doing this. Once they've been laying for five minutes, we're then going to measure their blood pressure and their heart rate. Then they are going to stand for two to five minutes. So you're gonna get the patient to stand up, measure their blood pressure after those two to five minutes. And you're gonna have now equivocally two heart rates and two blood pressures that we can compare. So why are we doing this? We're comparing these blood pressures and we're comparing these heart rates to see if there's any change along with any symptoms with the patient. And what we're looking for is if there's a drop systolically of more than 20 milligram of mercury, right? So what we're looking at is if there is a drop more than 20 systolic or a drop more of 10 diastolic. See the word or. It's either 20 systolic or 10 diastolic. Is there a change? Yes, that's orthostatic hypotension. Or is there a change in the heart rate as well? Because what we're looking at here is if there's a change, they say roughly around 10 to 20%. So if the heart rate 
Before was 100 and now it's 120. There's a significant change. We also want to note that. And you want to note any symptoms. Some patients, when you do the orthostatic blood pressures, they're going to stand and maybe get a little dizzy, but they're not going to be passing out on the ground, so you might be able to continue. But if a patient does stand up and get super dizzy and you know, you're like, oh, this guy's not going to make it, I better send him back down, send him back down because that is a, a conclusive finding that they can't even get, from, get up from sitting or, stand, or laying to standing without having some type of symptoms. So what are these symptoms? Like what are, what are we looking for? We're looking for a change in the, in the systolic or the diastolic. We're looking for a change in the heart rate, but we're also looking for symptoms. And what are those symptoms that we're looking for? These symptoms are probably the symptoms that the, uh, that the patient's been coming in complaining about. They're saying things like, when I stand up, I get dizzy. Or when I stand up, I feel confused or altered for a second. Disoriented, right? Or severely, maybe it's loss of consciousness. When I stand up, I'm getting some angina. Or, you know, something like chest pain. Or when I stand up, I'm getting neck or head pain. And why are we looking for all of these? We're looking for these symptoms, and the NCLEX likes to give us these symptoms for some type of orthostatic hypotension or trouble with changing from sitting to standing because there's a mechanism within our body that is trying to keep our blood pressure in the correct spot, right, or not drop too fast. And when there's an interruption in that pathway, we then have some type of hypotension, orthostatic hypotension. So we do the procedure with our patient. We see a change in systolic, diastolic, or heart rate. We note the symptoms. But why does all this occur? Like, we've talked about this bef before. Why does this happen? This patient is having an issue from laying or to standing or sitting to standing, right? So what's going on? Why, why are we getting dizzy? Well, let's back it up. How does this mechanism supposed to work? It's supposed to work when you sit to stand, right? You have five liters of blood in your body. And when you lay and stand or sit and stand, there's about 500 to 1,000 milliliters or one-fifth of the blood in your body that goes to your lower extremities and your splenic circulation or your important organs within your, your abdomen cavity. So when that happens, all of that blood whoosh, rushes there and you're like, okay, maybe you, you feel something for a second. So because of this volume of blood, this one fifth of blood goes away, right? It starts to decrease the volume that's returned to the heart because now that blood is going to our extremities and to our organs, it's not going to the heart. So it triggers in our, our body, hey, there's a decreased volume of blood to my heart. Uh-oh. So the body responds by saying, okay, we are having a decrease in our ventricular filling, which is decreasing my cardiac output, and therefore my blood pressure is going low. So all of a sudden the body starts to respond. It recognizes this trigger, and it says, all right, we got to make sure our blood pressure doesn't drop too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase our peripheral vascular resistance we're gonna increase our venous return and we're gonna increase our cardiac output because we know as ninja nerds that if we increase these things, that is all going to increase our blood, pre blood pressure and prevent a low or a drop blood pressure, okay? So when there's a problem in here somewhere in this response mechanism, that's when we have some type of issue or we have that orthostatic hypotension because our body isn't doing the thing it needs to do to protect that drop to come back up. So it's saying, uh-oh, your body, you're, you know, my, my blood pressure is going low and I can't do nothing about it. So what are those causes? What are those things that, the, that may cause us to have orthostatic hypotension or orthostatic blood pressure issues? The first is volume depletion. Simple and easy as that. If we don't have enough volume within our body and we stand up and some and our a lot of it goes to our again our organs and our lower extremities there's not enough to fill the ventricle back up so we can't get that venous return to be as increased as we want it to be and because of that depletion we're going to have hypotension and what are some of those depletions that could be diuretics or the patient is diuresing a lot 
they're vomiting, or they unfortunately have some type of hemorrhage that we don't know about yet. The next is a cardiac problem. They either have heart failure or a valvular disease, which is in impeding any type of function in here, our cardiac output or our peripheral vascular resistance. And because of that, again, we're not getting that response to be able to, de, um, to, be able to not let our blood pressure drop, right? What about endocrine problems? If you're having trouble with your thyroid, or you're a diabetic, and you're having some type of hormonal imbalance, again, it's going to impede this response in this pathway. And the last is any type of neurological causes, particularly Parkinson's, has a lot of problems with this mechanism, again, occurring in our body. So what is the treatment? The treatment for this problem, this orthostatic hypotension, is to treat the cause. So if they're having trouble with volume depletion, give them volume back. If they're having cardiac problems, we should be assessing their cardiac function. Maybe they need eventually have a valve replacement or they need more heart medications in order to make sure that they don't have this problem. Could also be a response to some type of medication. So remember that anyone who has been put on like low um, blood pressure medications, it could be dropping their blood pressure too low, it's working too good, and they're having some type of issue. So we want to treat the cause. So remember, with orthostatic hypotension, we're looking at this mechanism not functioning properly. And that's all because we stayed with our patient, we made them lay, take their blood pressure and heart rate, stand, take their blood pressure and heart rate, and we were able to note a change in this. And that is going to point us in the direction of well, what is causing this and how can we fix our patient, how can we make them better and prevent any further damage or problems to their life. All right, Ninja Nerds, in this video, we talked about orthostatic blood pressure. I showed you how to do it and also how to assess what's going on with your patient and what might be causing it. I hope it made sense. I hope you liked it. Make sure to hit that like button. And as always, until next time.